So today is New Year's Eve. I'm like literally I'm an anime and uploading role right now because like yesterday, like kind of like a few hours ago, you could say, I uh, dropped that video of the Jack Boys review. But uh, yeah, you guys should definitely check that video out. In this video, I'm going to be giving my best, my favorite albums and the best albums, in my opinion, of 2019 before the year ends. Hopefully, I can publish this video on New Year's Eve before 2020. So yeah, let's get right into it. Let's start with number 13. I'm starting with manual. I'm including EPs. I mean... I've seen people like put them like albums in their list, so I'm just gonna put EPs because why not? I have like 13 albums in this list. It's it's shorter than what everyone else has, but I just wanna keep it like the best to the best. You know, I wanna make like a long list. But yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna go with the manual. If you guys don't know, Amir Van, the one who made this EP, he was an ex Brockhampton member who was you know just they kicked him out because of the allegations and all that. He was cheating on his girlfriend, all that stuff. But still, he returned strong with this EP, which I think is a banger. A lot of these um, tracks are like have these hard um, hitting trap beats that are just really cool. And I like the and I like how he's like responding to all the backlash and all that stuff. That it just really screwed him up. It's it's just really messy, and he regrets doing all that stuff that he should have done in the first place. But uh, yeah, I think it was pretty refreshing to see Amir Van again. Um, I'll definitely give it an 8 out of 10. I'm going to be putting scores in the description, probably. And like, probably here in the screen, I'll just put like the score as well. But yeah, I will give this um, album an 8 out of 10 or an EP. It's a pretty short album, but you guys should definitely listen to it. Our uh, next one is Zoo. I'm, I literally have my phone here. I'm just literally just have like a whole list. And I'm like, I don't remember every single album how I positioned it. Because it's, it's not a long list, but still, it's hard to remember. Zoo um, by Zenzel Curry. Um, this album was really cool. I like the Miami type of um, feeling. It's like it's really Miami-ish. I guess you could say it has like, these trap beats that go pretty hard. And I like, I just like everything from this. I like the concept and all. It feels like really like it's coming mostly where he came from. It's like um, his origins. I guess you could say because you know he was born in Miami. And I like I like the features here, like the Rick Ross. I know that in the video that I made a reaction, I didn't like it, but just listening to it again, I really like that one. But uh, yeah, I just think it was a pretty decent album. Um, you guys should definitely go listen to it. It's pretty short, like 30 minutes long, but yeah, it does a lot of things in 30 minutes. Next album is The Plugs I Met by Benny the Butcher. I think this album was actually pretty good. If you guys like, you know, old hip, like old school hip hop with those samples and all that stuff. I think you'll love this album as well. I like the one, uh, especially with the Pusha T. I just cannot remember the song name, but still, it was pretty cool. I like what he did, does with those host features. I feel like even though like this album is good, it's a little bit better. I wanted to see more of him. Probably next year it's gonna like drop a new full length album or something, but who knows? I really want to hear more of Benny the Butcher. So the next one is the first Glass Beach album. We're getting to top 10s now. You guys probably don't know about this. I literally heard about this because I saw a video of Anthony Fantan reviewing this album. And I gotta say, this album is actually pretty good. Like, it's like a rock, it's like a pop rock type of album. It's kind of like hard to really describe this album. It's a pop rock, emo rock kind of like thing. I think I guess you could say, but at the same time it has like these experimental vibes so an hour long and it has these jazz elements and these hardcore punk rock elements like all together in, it, in the album it's just pretty cool i mean there's like some interludes that are like beats and all they're like very like smooth and jazz and all that stuff i just like that type of feeling but yeah i think if you guys like rock or it's emo pop or just emo stuff in general you'll probably like this album as well so next album is forever by um sure i believe is her name but yeah i definitely like this album a lot um it's kind of like this synth way popish type of vibe it is an e-core but it's smooth it's like really you can, it's like really chill music it's really nice music that you can just just really chill to really like i, I like the type of sound that she goes for it's more of like 80 ish as i was saying vapor wave ish chill nice music i think you'll love this album as well the next one is rancho the dreamers 3 i know you guys probably didn't expect this i've been seeing people rate like a seven or six and all that stuff i personally like it it's a compilation album there's a lot of bangers from here and as I said in my Jack Boys review, I was like comparing Donald Tolliver and all that stuff, even though he's kind of this project. I was comparing it to J.I.D. because he carried like the entire album. Even though people see that as like a negative thing, I think that's a positive thing that it's not like J. Cole. Because even though he's like the biggest artist here and he assembled Dream Build. But yeah, there's like a lot of artists that I just did not hear before. And I thought they were pretty decent. It's like an introduction. I like him. I like the album that's introducing me to new different artists to like listen to. And yeah, I think it was a pretty good compilation album. Like, give props to J. Cole, Dream Bell, everybody. Next album was All My Heroes Are Cold. 
I don't know why, but I used to laugh when I say that, like, that title. Yeah, so, this is an album by Jack Peg Mafia. I can't even really identify this, because it has, like, these elements, like, noise, sc like, screaming and all that stuff. That's, like, r like r reminds me of metal. And at the same time, there's, like, a lot of singing from JPEG Mafia. Instead of, like, like, there is rapping, but most of it is singing. But, uh, yeah, definitely, if you guys want, like, weird experimental albums, this is, like, a definitely an album that I would recommend to you. Next album, Bandana by uh freddie gibbs and Matt Lib. i think bandana uh, even though it resumes kind of like what pinata did with uh another album of freddie gibbs and Matt Lib, uh, Matt Lib, which is like his drug dealing thing how he came up and how he did before the rap game and all that stuff even though it's mostly like that like i still think he has like, a lot of flows and all that stuff in this album i think that freddie gibbs does show a lot of potential in this album he shows a lot of things even though it isn't like it's nothing that we've ever heard it's it's kind of the same, but still, I think his flows are decent, the features are decent. I really like the one with Pusha T and uh, Killer Mike, Palma Live. I, it's just pretty cool. And I also like the intro track that just, this Chinese auto, like, tran Google Translate thing that I definitely cannot say, but still, it's just really funny. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just, like, a really funny thing, and I like all of these tracks. The majority of the tracks are really good. If you like, like, Matt Lib production, like, this example, like, MF Doom, like, Mad Villainy, then you're in a treat for this one. It's, like... Mostly old school hip hop and there's like some there's like a few trap tracks I guess you could say but all of this is old school hip hop samples and all that stuff but uh yeah if you if you guys are a fan of this you'll definitely like this album all right so my fifth spot is you know what I'm saying by Danny Brown I I just like this album so much it's like it's not old school it does have like some it's kind of it's like old school rap. But I like I like his flow, I like his production, his creativity. This is what really carries Danny Brown, in my opinion. I think this album is not as extreme as the Shaw City Exhibition, even though it's shorter in length, 33 minutes. I still think he does a lot of things in 33 minutes. Next up, we got Ginger. Ginger, wow. What can I say about this album? Ginger is like really... It has like this um elements like from... R&B, smooth R&B, sometimes it goes crazy and all that stuff, like St. Percy with that hard-hitting bass, uh, Heaven Belongs to You, with Slow Tie, I believe. And yeah, this album was like really a combination of, as I was saying, R&B, sometimes pop elements, and some hip-hop, if you guys um, like those type of stuff. I personally enjoyed this album a lot. It's not like their best album yet, but it's still a really great album. I do recommend you to listen to it. And me as a Brockhampton fan, I like this album. It, it was, I think it was pretty decent, it was pretty good. But yeah, number three is Ventura. I like the jazzy elements you incorporate to smooth vocals. Um, that Smokey Robinson, the Andre 3000 feature in the first track. Uh, yeah, I definitely like this album a lot. I like this, I like how you get a meaning. And like in the first track, it's mostly him saying, please come back. I found out Ventura was actually the city, I think. Or the street that he was born in. And I think that's pretty cool. You know, it's like a pretty cool little thing. And also I have the vinyl over there, which I just cannot resist not buying the album. It's just super cool. So yes, the number two spot, we got The Sailor. And you guys might be thinking, how is The Sailor number two and not number one? Like, because I, I remember like my most viewed video, almost 400 views. You guys should go check it out right now. <laughs> but still, um, I get a 9 out of 10. I put in the thumbnail album of the year and I sent a video maybe this could be the album of the year definitely I um it's not that <laughs> it's number two but uh, yeah it, this isn't a bad album this is number two number three it, if it's in this list it's still good I think you guys should check it out but still um the sailor I like it's pop rap type of elements I usually don't like pop rap that much but this album was an exception for me it has like this um creative production and stuff um, like, an example, Yellow has, like, that piano and all that stuff that sounds kind of, like, haunting, and then the violins and the strings and all that stuff. I think that's pretty cool. It's kind of refreshing to see Rich Brian go to this path, because if you guys don't know, his first album, his debut album, Amen, was more trap and all that stuff. It was more trap, pop, rap type of thing. Even though I like that album, I still I still think The Sailor is kind of better. But, uh, yeah, The Sailor, if you really want that smooth, chill, pop, rap type of feel... Go check this album out. I think you guys will love this album a lot if you're like a pop rap fan. And yes, for number one spot, what could it be? Igor, of course. I think Igor by Tyler Creator is my album of the year. Almost every track in here is just amazing. I, I love his narrative. It's mostly like taking that perspective. If you guys don't know, um, Frankenstein's kind of like 
henchman, I guess you could say, Igor, his like sidekick. And it's mostly like him kind of narrating his point of vision. Like he's kind of like underrated, I guess you could say. It's narrating like his love and all that stuff. How he's telling a story about love and all that stuff. This girl doesn't, lo doesn't love him, but he loves her. And like I like that some tracks even goes for more aggressive feel because like he's like his heart is broken on stuff and how he feels. I just like the message. I like the narrative. It's kind of clear. I really like the the person he's portraying. I like how Tyler is portraying this type of person. Also the elements. It's like pop. It's like this vaporwave 80ish type of sound. Um, 90ish. Like R. Sometimes R and B like a boy has a gun. Uh, synthesizer. It's, it's like a lot of things. It's like really 80ish. It's really popish. And if you guys like this type of music, then I think you guys should check this out. And mostly for a narrative. I like this one a lot for the narrative. And for some times, it switches up things out of nowhere. Definitely love this album a lot. You guys should go definitely check this album out. I also got the vinyl. Like, literally. Let me just go get it. Bro, this, this, this is literally the face of album of the year. <laughs> This is the face of album of the year. That was my favorite albums of this year. What do you guys think? What are your favorite albums? Leave in the comment down below. Do like a top 10 list or top 20 list. I don't care. Do a list. Do um say your favorite album of this year. Tell me why. But uh yeah, that was my uh, favorite albums list of this year, 2019, before the year ends. So anyway, if you guys like this video, be sure to hit that like button down below. Also remember to subscribe, guys. Turn the notification bell. And yes. Peace out and see you next year.